It's Sunday the 16th of June, just looking over some of the reports uh, that I wrote last week. Here are the reports on Friday. I have a free reports page, daytradeideas.co.uk forward slash free dash reports. Uh, have a look anytime if you're not a subscriber. These are the exact reports that I send, uh, send out to my subscribers, but I like to post them here for free so that everyone else can have a look occasionally. So we'll start with the Aussie dollar. Uh, on Friday, I was looking at 69006885 as the key level. Um, if that held, I was looking for us to test minor resistance at 69.2025. We didn't quite get there. In fact, the bounce very early topped at 69.18. And then I wrote that with the Aussie in a negative trend, a break below 68.90 target, 68.60.76 before the May low at 65.62. So we did uh, move back below that support level. And once we broke 68.90, and we hovered around there for a little while, actually. It held for a little bit, but not enough. Uh, no bounce. It was just holding that support level quite nicely for a long time. Once we broke through 68.90, as I suggested, we would collapse down to 68.60. So we uh, 68.65, 68.62. That's where we went to. In fact, we overran just a little bit 68.58 before a bounce back. So this looks pretty negative for the start on Monday. New Zealand dollar headed lower last week. On Thursday, we hit the next target and support at 66. Sorry, 65.60, 65.50. Uh, I said on Friday morning that we were holding that support perfectly for the whole day on Thursday. Indeed, we did. But I wrote that a break below 65.40 would target 65.25.20, 90 on Friday. Well, as you can see, that was the support level that I had. Just a little bit of a bib support there. Uh, once that was broken, uh, we did tumble quite significantly. Uh, initially, we hit 65.25.20 actually and hold, held that bang on. Uh, but the bounce only reached... 65.47, uh, so just below that 65.50, 65.60 area, which was obviously acting as resistance. So the level, those levels work quite nicely. And then we plunged to my ultimate target of 65.00, 60, 64.90, uh, bottoming almost there at 64.86. This market does look quite negative, uh, but clearly the most important level of the week will be the support at the May low of 64.80. All last week in the dollar yen, I had strong resistance at 105.80, sorry, 108.50, 108.60, and uh, didn't work so well at the beginning of the week. We pushed up above there just fractionally, although Tuesday was a little bit more of a push higher to 108.79. But on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, those that resistance level worked really, really well. So selling into shorts there produced some great profits. Uh, on first thing, late last thing Thursday, first thing Friday, we got to 108.53. So again, another chance to get short. We plunged to. 108.14, so that 108, 108.20 target was hit. Uh, we didn't quite get as far as the 108.0095, uh, and then we bounced back again to that 108.50.60 resistance area, which held. So this will be key uh, on the open. If we do manage to hold above 108.50 and get above 108.60, that's obviously going to be more positive and looking at 108.80. Uh, to 108.90 as resistance area. You can see that we need a break below 108. Uh, 14 to target 108.10 before the recent lows around 107.90, 107.80. Euro yen lower last week. We broke the minor support at 122.60.55 to target key support at 122.30.20. Now that held really nicely on Thursday. In fact, we got a, a decent enough bounce off there to make a bit of profit on, the, on a long trade. Small, small uh, 20 pips or so. Uh, I thought it might hold again on Friday. It didn't. So stops were activated on that. And I'd written that uh, a break of key support, I had a stop below 121.95. So there was a potential 30 pip loss on that. But if you sold on the break below there, we hit our targets of 121.75 and 121.50.45. Or at least we got close to it. 121.57 was where we got to. So this looks a bit more negative for the start of trade this week. In the euro, what was key for me was first resistance at 112.85.95 and a move below the 100-day moving average at 112.70 would uh, continue the move to the downside well. Um, on Friday, we certainly found resistance at 112.85.95. In fact, 112.89 was the peak. So if you're selling into that resistance, we then did eventually move down below 112.70. It held uh, initially quite well. But once we were through there, of course, we hit all our targets. Uh, down as far as 112.00. So that was a little bit easier to trade if you were in short positions at, at the resistance level. The buying opportunity at 112.00, uh, 112.10, 112.00, well, it worked perfectly as support. We bottomed exactly at 112.00, in fact. We couldn't really get back above 112.10, so we 
hovered at that level into the close. So although uh, the buying opportunity held the downside, there was no profit on that trade. Uh, clearly, that will be the level to watch. Break below 112.00 or 111.90 at least will be more negative at the start of this week. In the dollar versus the Canadian, I had uh, first support at 133.005. Uh, to target 133.45.55 at a bounce. I was selling there, but with a tight stop, only a 10 pip stop, uh, a break above to target 133.90.95. So although that support held nicely on Thursday, uh, we pushed up to what I thought would be a good selling opportunity around here. You see this is the congestion uh, the week before, but we pushed up there, up through there. So shorts were stopped with a little uh, with a 10 15 pip loss nothing too seriously if you then jumped into a long to take advantage of the move up to 133.90 that worked in fact we ran higher we ran up to 134.22 pound versus dollar cable was tricky at the start of the week i had uh i had oh, can't do that i had um minor support at 12 uh, 126 80 70 that came from a little trend line here and some moving averages just clustering up around just below the 127 double o uh, area uh, I did say that uh, there was only minor support there and a break lower would target 126.55.50 and 126.10.00 so if you did manage to sell the break below there you did get a good chance actually because on this little dip we then bounced back up to 126.80 which was just your last chance to get into a short and then bang uh, really nice move to the downside if you managed to catch that 126.00 uh, was hit we overran as far as 125.78 so a good profit on that Looking pretty negative. The only support of any relevance at all is the previous low seen in May at 125.65.55. So break below there will be negative. Gold worked nicely for us, uh, certainly in the second half of the week. We held strong support at 13.30.32. The longs were perfect on the bounce uh, to minor resistance at 13.41, 13.42 on Thursday. On Friday, I said that we would make a break above that minor resistance for a test of stronger resistance at the year high of 46.48, 13.46. 48. Um, I didn't necessarily suggest a short, but um, if we were to, if we broke that, I was looking for all these targets up to 13.56 and possibly even 13.60. Well, we did move up through all those levels and hit almost every target. We got to 13.58, not quite as far as that 13.60 target. Now, I was surprised at this pullback. I didn't expect the market to reverse from there, or I would have suggested a short position. So hopefully the longs took profits on the move up to those targets. Um, uh, but as I say, I wouldn't have suggested a short. So I'm quite surprised that we plunged all the back, way back to 1337. And I'm wondering now if this in indicates some sideways direction at the start of this week. Silver, we also did really well last week. We were buying into silver as well at the uh, buying opportunity of 1462.60. We had stops below 1460, uh, which we did get close to. Well, I think we traded 1460 actually, but we didn't break it. So we, ju we got lucky. Just managed to hold on to longs uh, for the bounce. Uh, on Thursday, we got up to uh, 14.93.95. So on Friday, I said that longs were working as we reached that target. And we were then looking for a move up to very strong resistance at 15.12, 15.15. Where did we get to? We got to 15.11.5. So hopefully enough of a move to take profit on the, our longs from down in this area at the beginning of the week. Um, but not sure if it's quite enough to enter a short position. Uh, if you got in a little bit early to that short position, well done, because the market did certainly plunge uh, probably a little bit further than I would have expected. But uh, uh, if um, it certainly held, held a 12.15 and 15.12.15 uh, level, and with a there was a very neat trade with stops above 15.18, uh, very low risk trade with a good profit potential. WTI crude also worked well into the end of the week. On Thursday, I wrote we had a potential double bottom actually on Wednesday I wrote that we had a potential double bottom buy signal in oversold conditions longs are low risk on the bet that the double bottom holds uh, we did in it did hold and we did uh, rock it up to uh, 53.45 in fact we headed higher on Thursday than even I expected on that bounce Friday a little bit more of a sideways pattern so uh, we do have a potential double bottom but it's not confirmed until we break above 54.84. So that would actually be the buy signal. In the meantime, uh, it looks like we could probably trade more sideways in between that sort of 51.00, 50.60 to 50.30, 50.80 50, area. We'll need a break, as I say, above 54, 54.90, uh, resistance at 54.30, 54.80. We'd need a break above 54.90 this week for something more positive.
If you are not a subscriber and you would like daily technical analysis, trade ideas, trade signals delivered at about 3 a.m. GMT, then go to daytradeideas.co.uk. On our homepage, you can subscribe to just the individual markets. There's some currency. Uh, each report has either two currency pairs or the commodities have gold and silver paired up. You can also subscribe to WTI crude and you can get stock index futures. Uh, US and European markets all there for you. Um, the best package we offer is the premium package. You pretty much get all the reports. It's only $1.99. In addition, you get a spreadsheet of my best trade picks for the day and you get a daily analysis video showing all the reasons why I pick those trades, uh, which is kind of uh, a good education for you. Sort of learn as you trade. That's the idea of that one.